Howdy, friendos. My name is Stuart, and welcome to the final part of our October trilogy. Well, quadrility. Anyway, you'll see in a second. Today, we are looking at Harry Potter, a.k.a. the Chosen One, a.k.a. the Boy Who Lived, a.k.a. the worst kid namer on the planet. Albus Severus Potter. I love how we can all just kind of agree that that was a painful scene. Even in the books, it was not good. If you haven't checked out our Draco Malfoy and Voldemort video, please do. We're going to be going into heavy spoilers for the franchise as a whole, and that means some context for magic and essentially all the other acts we'll be doing in this particular video. And if you haven't already, be sure to show your support by liking this video, sharing it around, subscribing, commenting, and ding-donging that bell. Amazingly, I didn't have a cringy call to action this time, though I suppose it's cringy that it's not cringy. If these videos do well, we'll be looking back at the Harry Potter franchise in the future, and I mentioned on Twitter a while ago that I want to do a who is the best teacher at Hogwarts video. Like, I know I've said I want to do certain videos and my schedule doesn't always allow it, but I, it, it, it's bugging me. So if these videos do well, get, give me an excuse to do a best teacher video. Anyway, as for our titular protagonist, Harry James Potter was born from the Hogwarts alumni and Order of the Phoenix members, Lily and James Potter. Harry was an ordinary magical boy when one day his home was attacked by the Dark Lord himself, Voldemort. Because the power of love is an unironic power in the Harry Potter universe, Voldemort's physical form was destroyed and obliterated when he tried to kill Harry. Harry, unaware of what happened, because he was a baby, survived survived with a piece of Voldemort's soul infused within him, and he was able to gain several dark abilities that he was unaware of. He was then picked up by Hagrid, and then Harry was dropped off to live with his only living relatives, the non-magical, or muggles, the Dursleys. Harry, much like Voldemort, is completely unaware of his magical lineage, but was raised in the abusive home that was the Dursleys. Throughout his formative years, the Dursleys did everything they could to, quote the books, squash all the magic out of him. As an 11 year old, he's still a nice kid, but he's still developing who he is and is listening to the Dursleys and their rules. At the start of the series, we will label Harry as true neutral. He is a 10 year old kid after all. And with that out of the way, let's go. Before we begin, I want to give a huge thank you to everyone that watched these Harry Potter videos this month. I've gotten a lot of positive criticism and my share of negative ones. And never let it be said that I cannot take that. If you want to have an honest discussion with me about this Harry Potter fiasco, I am live on Twitch right now from the publishing of this video till 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I'll be live for about eight hours. I'll be entertaining myself, making a Hogwarts professor tier list, but if you want, come on in, we can chat and hang out. At one point in the day, we will be playing D&D, &D, and I will not be answering questions if we're playing D&D, &D, but through that eight-hour period, I'll be answering questions, discussing things, just trying to have an honest discussion about it, because never let it be said that I am not unwilling to take a look at myself. I know some people have some very strong opinions about this, so go ahead. Uh, you can come on in there, give me your fair share, and I'll take that into consideration for future videos. And with that out of the way, let's get started. Rick the Sempra! <laughs> Happy birthday, son. Oh, my Dudley's special day. On Dudley's birthday, Harry does several chores as is usual. Unfortunately, Harry loses his temper when, after talking to a snake at the zoo, causes the glass to vanish. Since Harry had no idea what he was doing in this moment, we're gonna go with True Neutral, since he isn't even aware that magic exists to this point. So, True Neutral. Don't be so stupid, you're going to go to the state school where you belong. Surviving his latest punishment, Harry receives a letter for him. He brings this in front of the Dursleys who takes the letter from him. No matter how hard he tries, and boy does he, Harry just can't get a letter. Chaotic neutral. <laughs> Discovered by Hagrid, Harry learns the quotable truth. You're a wizard, Harry. I'm a what? You're a wizard. Yeah. That one. With his world rocked, Harry goes with Hagrid to become a wizard. He learns he's a huge deal. He's also loaded and has a tragic backstory. He's just following Hagrid's lead, but tries to be polite concerning Voldemort. Uh, neutral twice. This is platform nine and three quarters. There's no such thing, is there? Now at King's Cross Station, Harry learns that he has to be on the train with no instructions on how to get there. Getting help from a wizarding family, Harry is on his way to school. On the way, he befriends Ron Weasley and meets future friend Hermione Granger, buying food off the trolley to bond. Neutral good. No thanks. This is Crab and Goyle, and I'm Malfoy. 
Right outside the Great Hall, Harry is offered friendship by Draco Malfoy, who you can totally check out in this other video up here. Despite the offer, Harry declines, especially after seeing Draco being rude to Ron. Neutral good! Difficult, very difficult. Plenty of courage, I see. So, sorting wouldn't be ding-worthy since it tests c his character as it is. However, with Harry dealing with the hat stall, he asks not to go to Slytherin specifically. This is based off of what has been told to him from Hagrid and Ron, and despite the hat insisting that it's not all bad. Since he doesn't want to go to Slytherin because he's afraid he'll turn out to be a dark wizard, we're actually going to go with neutral good. Can you imagine the look and I'm gonna go space if we were late? Attending school and enduring lessons from the second worst teacher in existence, Severus Snape, Harry hears about the Gringotts break-in, forgetting that Hagrid had asked Harry to keep this on the DL. Life continues until Harry ignores the rules to not save Neville's remember all from Malfoy. This actually gets him on the Quidditch team and earns him a chaotic good. The staircase has changed, remember? On their way back to the common room, Harry, Ron, and Hermione are redirected by the castle and Mrs. Norris to Fluffy the dog. This was unintentional, but they were trying not to get in trouble, so we're gonna label this as chaotic neutral. Trolls are really stupid. Probably people playing jokes. On Halloween, Harry learns of the troll in the dungeons. Realizing Hermione was in trouble, Harry and Ron rush to save her alone. With a lot of luck, they save Hermione and get some prestige points and a new friend. Neutral good. Noticing a limp from Snape and his broom acting funky, Harry suspects his potions teacher tried to get past Fluffy. He tells Hagrid his suspicions and learns whatever Fluffy is guarding has something to do with a guy named Nicholas Flamel. Despite Hagrid's request, Harry is researching with his friend, even using a newly acquired Deathly Hallow to help. <laughs> Neutral good and chaotic good for the sleuthing. For his discovery of the 12 uses of dragon blood, and his work on alchemy with, with enough time, the trio learn about the philosopher or sorcerer's stone and talk to Hagrid. Unfortunately, they're caught out of bed after dark and with a dragon by Malfoy, losing points. Chaotic good. Stuck in detention, Harry is forced to work with Malfoy to find out who's killing unicorns. Unfortunately, this leads to an encounter with Lord Voldemort, where he's only barely survived. Knowing Voldemort is after the stone, Harry consults with his friends, Lawful Neutral. What Hagrid wants more than anything is a dragon, and a stranger turns up who just happens to have one. Deducing that Snape and Voldemort are after the stone, Harry realizes Hagrid was tricked into giving up vital info. Rushing to McGonagall, they try to warn her and Dumbledore, but are told everything will be fine. Worried about evil being reborn, Harry decides to break the rules to help everyone. Lawful good for the reporting, and then chaotic good for the sleuthing. Totalis. Hexing Neville to keep quiet, the group goes through the traps. Even when Ron could be in danger, Harry tries to make sure his friends will be okay before facing off against the Dark Lord himself. Neutral good. Next to him, who would suspect? Poor stuttering Professor Quirrell. Face to face. To face, with Voldemort and Quirrell, Harry is able to obtain the stone. Despite the Dark Lord's threats, Harry stays strong, and with the power of love, he's able to withstand Voldemort. He survives and passes his first year of magical education. Lawful good. Also, I, I don't care what the meme is. Stopping Wizard Hitler is only worth 60 points. Really? Come on. I don't care what the meme says. It's worth way more than 60 goddamn points. Oh, also, he kills Quirrell, but um, that was a movie edition, so um, I'm ignoring that. I haven't had any messages from any of my friends. Returning to Privet Drive, Harry receives no letters from his friends. Intent on obeying the Dursleys during their dinner party, Harry is given a cryptic warning by house elf Dobby. Despite the warnings and the fact that he could lie, Harry can't obey Dobby's wishes and is punished. True neutral, twice in fact. Because he did nothing wrong. Hi, Harry. Saved by Ron, Fred, and George, Harry escapes Privet Drive and to the burrow. After a mishap with flu powder, Harry eventually reconnects with everyone and gets to see some Nat 20 casting for Gilderoy Lockhart. Dealing with Malfoy Jr. and Sr., Harry buys his books and is a pleasant guest. Neutral good. I rate the front page.
Hey, so I know it's tempting to label stealing a car as entirely Harry's idea. However, it was Ron's suggestion, and they don't know if the Weasleys were trapped. It wasn't smart at all that he went with it, but he's 12. However, because of their sloppiness, Harry is put into serious trouble. Chaotic neutral for stealing the fucking car. <laughs> After doing some detention, Harry hears a strange and dangerous voice. Following the source and telling the truth that he had simply found Mrs. Norris isn't bad. However, hiding the fact that he heard a disembodied voice while sounding crazy isn't completely honest, so I'm gonna go with chaotic good. Mind you, it would be difficult. Not to mention we'd be breaking about 50 school rules. And it'll be dangerous. Learning what the Chamber of Secrets is, Harry, Ron, and Hermione all team up to grill Malfoy using highly dangerous Polyjuice Potion. And we're just going to abuse it? Oh, maliciously. Bitchin' how we do. I actually had to think on this one a bit, and I, I think stealing ingredients from your teacher, lying to your classmates, and brewing extremely dangerous potions in the school bathroom in order to trick a 12-year-old into spilling dark secrets to you... kinda has to be chaotic neutral. This is a wacky, wild plan that only exists to establish Polyjuice Potion is a thing. Chaotic Neutral. Gather round. Can everybody see me? With tensions riding high after the first student is petrified, Harry joins Duel Club. It's time to do 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 of course, given the chance to fight Draco, Harry begins going rogue and attacking him. When Malfoy summons the snake, Harry then immediately uses Parcel Tongue to calm it down. It's implied in later films that Parcel Tongue is some type of magic. Like, Harry can't use it anymore after Voldemort dies in the later movies. Uh, spoiler, by the way. So I'm not going to overthink this. Attacking Malfoy in the heat of a moment in a duel with non-lethal spells, chaotic neutral. Stopping a snake from attacking your classmate, neutral good. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with this, even if it's considered dark magic. Ivanaska. No, sir. Nothing. Harry, there are people getting hurt, and now you're just hiding information even though you know it'll sound crazy. I'm sorry, but chaotic neutral, man. Knocking out Crab and Goyle, Harry and Ron go to talk to Malfoy. I've already covered this in the Malfoy episode, but the most they ever get is that it was 50 years ago, someone died, and the attacker was expelled. Also, KOing two children so you can interrogate their buddy. <sighs> Chaotic neutral. Discovering a strange diary, check out the Voldemort video, Harry learns Hagrid was to blame the last time the chamber was opened. When Hermione was petrified, Harry and Ron go to speak to Hagrid, only for Lucius Malfoy to come in, arrest Hagrid, and sack Dumbledore. Wanting answers and not sleep, Harry follows Hagrid's clues to learn that his first friend is, in fact, innocent. Chaotic good. Capable of living for hundreds of years, instant death awaits any who meet this giant serpent's eye. Finding Hermione's clue on the basilisk, Harry learns to his horror that Ginny has been dragged into the chamber. I will say going to tell Lockhart what they know is a noble and good act. Lawful good. Holding him at one point to still go along, even if it's defending themselves. Eh, chaotic good. I know. I have this. Alone, thanks to Lockhart, Harry goes in and faces a younger Voldemort. He's able to beat the memory and save Ginny. Plus, he even frees Dobby from the Malfoy's control. A good end to a very tough year. Lawful good twice. Nothing. It's cool stuff. Later, perhaps, if you behave. Again, uh, with the tough calls. Harry makes a deal with his uncle to behave when his even worse aunt comes to visit. Yes, he loses his temper, but it's because she's just awful it's an accident that she blew up but because he technically meant to hurt her with magic and the fact that he unlocked the inflation fetish for someone in the audience this has to be chaotic evil thinking that he's now expelled harry gets the fuck out of privet drive and even pulls out his wand and even says marge deserved it However, he's picked up by the night bus and taken to the Leaky Cauldron. Leaving a muggle for dead and then piecing out is chaotic evil. So that's that. 
And no harm. After the Minister of Magic sweeps this magical snafu under the rug. Mmm, no, no anti-government joke this week. I think they're right on this one. That's the right call. Harry has no charges pressed on him and promises to stay put in the Leaky Cauldron until Hogwarts. He also makes the same promise to Arthur Weasley about not going after the recently escaped Sirius Black. Since he's keeping his word and didn't intend to break it, lawful neutral. You signed it, then I could go. I can't. Only a parent or a guardian can sign. Since I am neither, it would be inappropriate. Harry tries to talk with McGonagall about going to Hogsmeade after Vernon naturally didn't sign the letter. Not liking a no, Harry tries to sneak out with his invisibility cloak before he's given the Marauder's map by Fred and George. Absolutely chaotic neutral. Good Dick? Who is that? Meeting up with Ron and Hermione, and scaring Malfoy, Harry learns that Sirius betrayed the Potters. Dude has a lot of reasons to be angry, but he's ready to hunt Black down and kill him, so technically chaotic evil. The spell I'm going to try to teach you is called the Patronus Charm. Did you ever hear of it? No? I've been glossing over Lupin, but the scene with Harry and Remus is really sweet. Harry gets a parental figure and learns a very complicated spell to better protect him. I, Lupin's like just objectively one of the best characters. Neutral good. Yeah, Harry, I have to ask again, what were you thinking? Spotting Peter's name and running around in the dead of night without his cloak and then reading the insults off the map. What were you expecting when you lost the map? Chaotic neutral. Who's that? Okay, so this part of the movie blazes by, so bear with me. After finding Scabbers, Ron is dragged to the Shrieking Shack. Harry follows and finds out that it's serious and he's ready to kill the man before he gets the situation. <laughs> Peter begs for his life. Harry chooses to bring Peter back, saving the man's life and freeing Sirius. And I'm sure nothing bad will happen to jeopardize this happy moment for Harry. Chaotic neutral for attacking Snape and lawful good for saving Sirius. Legally. Freed with the chance to escape, things are looking up for Harry, only for a full moon to transform Lupin. Peter escapes, and Harry tries to save his godfather from the werewolf and the Dementors, instead being saved by a mysterious figure. Neutral good. Child's voice, however honest and true, is meaningless. And once again, so much to go over. Going back in time with Hermione, they're able to save Sirius, Buckbeak, and Harry perfects his Patronus. The day is saved, but Sirius is still wanted. Illegally utilizing time magic to save your uncle is chaotic good twice. Once for illegally, and once for the time magic. Waking up from a nightmare thanks to Lord Moldybutt, Harry tries to enjoy a Quidditch World Cup. Too bad the wizard KKK comes in to ruin everything again. Harry does at least help with the Ministry with some information. Neutral good. Writing to Sirius about what happened, Harry is ready to enjoy a nice pleasant year at Hogwarts. Hell, he's excited to watch the Triwizard Tournament too. And I'm sure nothing bad will happen in the foreseeable future. True neutral! Might have let your best friend know, though. Let you know what? Horrified when his name ends up in the Goblet of Fire, Harry is forced to compete. On the outs with a jealous Ron, Harry learns that his first task involves dragons. Knowing the other two champions know this, Harry tells Cedric, even if it's against the rules, chaotic good. If I can see the whites of their eyes, they're standing right behind me. <laughs> with Mad-Eye's help, Harry learns how he can get past the first task. He succeeds, even mending his relationship with Rod. Too bad he doesn't know how to understand the next challenge and begins lying to Hermione so she won't bug him about it. Chaotic neutral. And that is some realistic 14-year-old bullshit. If you can't get a date, you can. I think I take the dragon right now. Now, I won't ding Harry for asking out a date to the Yule Ball at the last second. That's stepping out of his comfort zone, and it can be horrifying, especially for a teenager. I will, however, ding him for what he does with his actual date. Both he and Ron are just dicks during the whole thing, and even make it awkward for Hermione, who was seeing Crumb. I'm sorry, it has to be chaotic evil. It was just total dick move the entire time. I'd try putting it in the water if I were you.
Taking Cedric's advice, Harry sneaks into the prefect's bathroom and learns the clue from the egg. He begins to crunch before getting some help with Gillyweed. While most of the tasks aren't ding-worthy, this is the exception. Harry, unsure of what will happen to the other people while under the water, stays behind to make sure that everyone gets out, docking himself points. Neutral good. Mr. Crouch? Telling the staff about a corpse is a good idea. Sticking your head into a strange material when you live in the wizarding world? Bad idea! Seriously, Harry, what kind of self-preservation skills do you have? He does this multiple times in the books, by the way. Lawful good for telling the teachers, and chaotic neutral for whatever the fuck this was. Now again, normally these tasks wouldn't be dingworthy, but Harry does two things of note. He saves Fleur and signals for help when she's knocked out, and after taking care of a bewitched crumb, Harry and Cedric decide to tie. Lawful good for helping Fleur, and neutral good for tying with Cedric. Witnessing Voldemort's return, Harry is forced to contend with Wizard Hitler. However, he does stand triumphantly and fight back. Harry lives up to his moniker, living to fight another day and returning Cedric's body back to Hogwarts. Awful good. Even. Not that. It's all right, Harry. It's all right. So I'm going to wrap this up pretty quickly here. Harry tells Dumbledore and Moody immediately that Voldemort is back. He does try to stay strong, but the trauma of seeing Cedric die and Voldemort's return is affecting Harry. After Barty Crouch's reveal, he gives his Triwizard's winnings to Fred and George, telling them to make a joke shop and pursue their dreams. Lawful good for telling your teachers, of course, and neutral good for helping Fred and George. And that's Harry's journey for now. Obviously, a lot is about to happen, and we're only halfway through this movie franchise, but we'll try to keep these looks brief, as Harry is one of those characters that is so dense that he deserves two parts. Well, he's not dense dense as a stupid kid. Well, he kind of is, isn't he? Anyway, be sure to stay tuned for part two for The Boy Who Lived. Thank you to the patrons, and I'll see you all next time. You're a wizard, Harry. I'm a what? 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 You're a wizard, Harry. I'm a what?